Hey, hey, what do you say? Terry Caliano, Dedicated Managers, back again, and I want to talk about JSON Web Tokens, or a little piece of it in this video. It's continuing on in, uh, where am I, in the uh, Vue.js authentication with Auth0 using Vuex and Vue Router, this whole SEO mess right here. Um, and I want to talk about those JSON web tokens that we're getting or that stuff that we're getting back from the server. So let's talk about what that even is. So when we log in, click that login button, it takes us to, whoops, I got the wrong thing here. Got the code here. Um, the router catches on the before each um, the callback URL after we log into Auth0, Auth0 sends us back to, to our application with a specified URL. And then we call to handle the authentication on the store, which is an action um, or a dispatch, an asynchronous activity. Um, we handle that authentication by actually letting, um, letting, well, no, we handle that authentication by, yeah, calling this parse hash thing, which is an auth zero functionality that they give to us as an object. So we just get to call it and send it a function. Uh, to run after it um, finishes up and it sends us this auth result. Anyway, they uh, we end up saving an access token and an ID token to local storage. Um, and so I'll show where that is right now. I've shown it before, but let's show it again just to remember where we are. So here's the website running. I click login. Um, we go to Auth0. We're on Auth0 Auth now on our tenant of Auth0. This Vue.js Auth0 is our tenant. I click log in. I am taken to a page now that um, only members can see. I now have the logout button, which I didn't have before. And if we look down here in my inspector, under the application local storage uh, local host here, we see some stuff that's set and it's this ID token. Uh, access token and expires at these are the things that we set right here so we told the browser to save that stuff using that language right there so what is this id token well let's take a look at it let's copy it head on over here to jwt.io which has a pretty cool little debugger and we will paste it right in there and take a look at that it gives us some information back in fact it tells us a lot of stuff. So one thing to know is that that token is not encrypted. Um, it is readily able to be read by anybody and if it contains sensitive information anybody can read it. Now the key is here is that it's an ID token um, and so we need to know if this stuff is true and that's where this verified signature thing comes in. So let's talk about that real quick. How do we know that what this in, what's in this token is accurate? And basically, it comes down to the um, the algorithm here that's used to uh, to sign it, not encrypt it, but to sign it. So in this case, they're using the RS-256, which is the new big boy on the block. Um, the HSA one is now old technology because it's got you actually have to send passwords around and everybody's got to have a copy of the special password and if somebody loses it it pretty much breaks your whole system the way this rs1 works is it uses certificates and that's what's down here um and it's a um not asynchronous i'm trying to come up with the right word um asymmetric is the word i'm trying to come up with it's asymmetric where there's two keys one key can be used to decrypt the um, decrypt this side and this bottom part of the token here, and see if it is um, if it was signed by the private key. So the asymmetricness of of these two things is that the the private key the private key signs it, and the public key can see if the private key was the one that signed it. So they're kind of a matching pair. Um, I should probably talk about this real quick. You see that there's three sections. There's section one, section two, uh, and then the blue section is the third section. And that is the header, the payload, and the signature verification. So again, this blue area is what this thing is going to work on to see if it is verified, um, if this stuff is verified. And you can go in and read about all kinds of things, but basically, this third section is, I think it's, you know, it's this thing plus this thing, 
um, encrypted and then, or hashed, and then that hash is is encrypted with the RS uh, with the 256 algorithm here. Um, I, I'm not going to go too deep into that, and I may have just said that wrong, but look it up. But the thing is, you know, we get this algorithm, we know that it's RS-256, and this is what threw me for the longest time. I couldn't understand how I took a token from my application, brought it over to this other website that doesn't know anything about my secret codes, uh, my, you know, my um, client secret in, in Auth0. How did it know that, this, that it was verified? Did it somehow contact Auth0? What did it do? Well... With the RS-256 algorithm, it doesn't need to know the, um, the private key. All it needs to do, do know is where do I go and get the public key, the public signature key um, certificate, the public certificate that allows me to decrypt this and see if it's correct. And so where it turns out, and this took me a long time to find out as well, is that it's, it's here. This this value right here, this, this uh, issuer key in the payload, should I think it should always be there. And it describes um, the, the person who issued the, the token. So we can go to this address, and then there's this other special thing. Um, I just copied this. It's view auth, you know, see, it's, it's view.js auth0.auth0.com. And that's what I have here, view.js auth0.auth0.com. But then there's this special thing that according to the specifications of OpenID, I believe it is, um, that there has to be this, this well-known URL and this OpenID configuration. This is every OpenID server should have this public thing. And so you, what you can do is you can load that, and then you can look at the file that gets loaded there. And this is, you know, this is what comes back. It's hard to look at, but if you look at it under the preview here, the Chrome does a nice job of breaking it out for you. And then there's this one key in here, the J, JWKS URI, which is this link right here. And so we can open that link. I believe I opened it right here. So that is the link. The J, it ends in JWKS.json, JWKS.json. Um, and so this thing here, which again, you know, I, if I refresh and I click on the, the file that's returned and I click on the keys, um, this thing has the certificate structure that allows this thing to go back and decrypt this and see if the signature and do its math to figure out if the signature is verified. So it gets pretty in depth, a little further in depth, because in fact, this thing right here is not the certificate. You have to do some work on this to actually get the certificate, which I'm not going to show right now. Um, and I'm, I'm not... I'm, I'm, you know, 98% sure on that. It takes a lot of, it takes some, some work. But ultimately, if we go back to here, this, remember we were talking about this diagram here, and this is the stuff we've been working on right here, this side. This is the front end here, and then you get that token back to the browser, and then the, the browser can send the access token or the ID token off to your services layer, which can go and get information from the database and then return stuff back to the browser. So, this is the front end UI, and then when you want to populate that data, you go through the services layer. So it's like Facebook when you see the, um, you know, you see the page load, and then all of a sudden, uh, maybe a half a second later, you know, all your user stories or your 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 wall posts fill in. That's the you know the UI being loaded first, and then the data going and being retrieved. And what they do is they send that token back to their server, um, and then they get that data back from their servers. So the other thing I want to talk about real quick is this, um, what is this JWKS thing? That is a JSON web key set. So instead of just having one certificate, you can have multiple certificates. It's a JSON object that represents um, a cryptographic key, though that's a JW key, a JW key set, a J, a JWK, a JWKS is um, contains multiple of those so it just contains multiple cryptographic keys um, and that's why this shows up nope here that's why this shows up as keys with a bunch of with well it's there's only one auth0 only use one but you can have multiple um, keys for authentication and how do you know which key to use it's by this key id 
which actually shows up in the um, up here in the header. Uh, why it's up in the header as opposed to part of the payload, why the issue and that are separate, uh, I guess because it's part of the RS-256 algorithm. Um, but this key here, notice MZF ends in CMW. If we go look at um, here, the key ID MZF ends in CMW, um, this key right here is we know to use this, this certificate to decrypt this guy, this thing down here, this blue area. So not totally, um, you know, not fully detailed, but hopefully it gives you, a, you know, some kind of understanding of the path of things that are going on. Again, you know, I was totally dumbfounded that I could take my token here, throw it in JWT.io um, here, which is made by Auth0, um, but it's a separate website. It's not like it has a back-end integration where it can understand things. Um, you know, I was blown away that I could take this ID token, throw it in here, and it knew whether or not the signature was verified. And again, just to sum things up, that's because it looked at the header here, which is not encrypted. It's able to look at before checking the verification. It checks that algorithm. It knows that it needs to get a certificate. It knows what certificate to get. It knows that from the issuer here, it can go to this domain, add the dot well known open ID, add this stuff that everybody is a standard that should be there for every one of these guys. And then it can get the uh, JWKS URI, which now this is not standardized, I don't believe, but this key is standardized. So this, this link could be, you know, anywhere that they want the, the authorization server wants it to be. Um, I think this is typical, but I don't think it's, it's required to be at the JWKS. Um, and then that you can pull up that address that allows them to pull up the, um, you know, check the kid and then pull the, the certificate. So that's the stream and that's how JWT was able to authorize, um, to not authorize, to verify the signature and know that this payload, um, you know, these two payloads here, this one and this one are accurately true. Nobody has tampered with them. So you can't use the public key here that it went and retrieved to rewrite this Thing, it won't work. You have to use the private key and that private key is only available in one place and that's on the authorization server. It's on um, auth0. So um, again that key isn't on both both ends of the transaction just the public key is made available so it can be decrypted out here in the public in the wild but that private key is only in one place. It's held under heavy security. It's not passed around. So um, that's why everybody's going to that is so that the, um, you know, that RS-256 over the HSA, which has the shared private keys where, you know, everybody needs to have a copy of that private key to be able to, to verify the signature. So with HSA, if I switch this to, um, if I switch this to H, I guess it's HS-256, um, it's HSA, you know, it's down here, it's SHA, I got on, whatever. Um, but basically now you have to put in the secret for it to, to decode it. Now this didn't, this didn't update here and that's why it's still showing signature. But if we look at a refreshed version, this HS-256, um, if I go and um, change, I'm going rogue here again on myself, but if I go and change this, um, I guess it changes the signature. I guess if I, if I change this, it becomes invalid, but now that's, you know, um, ultimately, let's, I guess if I put secret A here and I copy this and now I refresh this page and now it's trying to use secret as the, um, you know, this is the key that it's trying to use for the secret um, key. Now it's false. It's an invalid signature because I'm not using the right password. Now it's the right password. So the decryptor, JWT, needs the, you know, the key to understand whether or not it's verified. So you'd have to pass this thing around, this your 256 thing, you'd have to pass that around to everybody and the, the side that's trying to read it needs to, to have that key. So your services layer here would need that key. But because we're using the, um, the other one, because we're using the RS one, this one here, that has the public key and so your services layer here can actually 
you know, I have an arrow here back to auth0, but it's going back to auth0 just to get that public key. It's not going back to the auth0 to get a password or anything. It's just going, doing what anybody could do is go and get that public key. And then it uses that public key to check and make sure that the, um, you know, the token that this guy sent this way is, is valid, that it wasn't, that nobody changed it on the way, or this guy didn't change it before sending it. This guy can't change it because he doesn't have the private key. The private key sits here. And so, um, you know, we can, we can all ask for the public key and verify it, but nobody can change that token. Um, this token here, the only guy that can change that token and authorize and sign it is, is auth0. But he makes the public key, he, she makes the public key available for, um, for everybody to understand whether or not the signing was, um, was done by this person with the public versus private key. So anyway, if nothing else, hopefully that gives you some ter terminology to look a little further. Again, I've managed to, um, to talk long-winded about something that probably should have taken about three minutes. But hopefully you got the idea. And um, I think that's about it. So again, this has been a dedicated manager's production. Um, please check out our YouTube channel here. Subscribe here at youtube.com slash dedicated managers. Hit subscribe to keep getting, I'm um, hoping to do weekly videos. Uh, depends on my workload. Usually my workload gets pretty heavy and it's tough to get one out every week, especially with my long windedness. Um, subscribe to us, call us, let us know if you're a programmer, send your, uh, send your information over. Sometimes we have overflow and need work, need help with getting projects done. If you have a project that, uh, that you need help with, feel free to contact us and we'd be glad to help you out. There you go. Take care. Have a great day. Happy coding. See you in the next video.